Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Lori Smith on Blog Talk Radio. Good evening. It is 10 o'clock p.m. here in Calgary, Alberta, and uh, this is Child Abuse Prevention and Human Rights Abuse Prevention is up to us. 30-minute live internet streaming radio broadcast from blogtalkradio.com. And I did pop the link into the chat room to what I want to talk about and finish up this article looking at uh, adult survivor issues regarding uh, you know, uh, survivors of child sexual abuse and incest. And it's a good article, and, and we were looking at it last on, on uh, Friday night. And so hopefully everybody will get something out of this. It's definitely not for children. This show is graphic. You know, it's adult content. It's, it's you know, not for younger children. And so you have to, you know, if you're under the age of 18, I just actually ask that you have permission to listen to my shows. You know, like have an adult listen to the show with you and make sure that it's something that is age appropriate for you because I don't have any idea how young people are who are listening to this show and or any of my shows, right? So it, it's, a, it's a little lot of adult content on my shows and a lot of mature material. Even though it's ultimately about stopping child abuse, you know, there's still a lot of adult content on my shows, and I just believe children should be protected at all times. So if you're younger than, if you're under the age of, eight, of 19, really, you know, I want you to have someone listen to the show with you and make sure that it is something age appropriately for you to listen to. And anybody else, you know, you have to listen at your own discretion. I'm talking about abuse, and abuse is this is such a sensitive subject. You know, a lot of people may find the material makes them uncomfortable. If it makes you uncomfortable, then you have to do the right thing, and you have to turn the show off. It is your discretion, right? So you listen at your own discretion. I appreciate everybody tuning in. The reason I'm talking about child sexual abuse and incest is because, you know, not that many people are. <laughs> so I'm willing to talk about it because this is an issue and this happened. This happens to so many people. If this has happened. You know, one in three to four girls, one in six to seven boys will be sexually abused in some way under the age of 18. Now, this is the stats that are out there, the facts that are out there, and abuse is underreported. So, you know, not every case is reported. Mine wasn't. And so, actually, the, the few times that, you know, that from different various peoples wasn't reported. So it goes unreported many times. And so the issue is, is that, you know, a lot of people don't want to talk about it. It's an uncomfortable topic. And a lot of people just don't want to hear about it. And I, understandably so. But I'm talking about it. I'm just one more person that is talking about it. And I don't mind talking about it because I certainly didn't, I didn't, I didn't like being abused. You know what I mean? Like I did not like, um, I didn't like being abused and as a child. And so I don't mind talking about it now. It's not a big deal for me to talk about it now. It, it, you know, going through it was a huge ordeal and it was horrific. And no child should ever have to go through this, and no one should have to suffer from from any type of sexual abuse or or sexual assault. Any any adult or children, no child or adult should ever have to suffer from that, and especially children. You know, I mean, they're not capable of even understanding what's happening, and they're not even set up to to be able to cope with it. You know what I mean? And, and this is absolutely horrific. And the situation is. What it leaves with, you know, so many people, adult survivors of child sexual abuse, you know, there's so many issues. Everybody would deal with something differently. We've all, even though the the assaults and whatever may be, you know, if it was molestation, it's molestation. If it's child rape, it's child rape. If it's if it's incest, it's incest. You know, and these these are just you know what they are. But the thing is, is depending on the severity and and the, and, and the and what it was and how long a child had to go through these things and whether there was any support. And, some people are, some children are more resilient than others. Not everybody's going to be in the same place, you know, as far as adult survivor issues go. So some people may have severe, you know, problems with PTSD and all kinds of issues. And some survivors may just have, you know, mild sort of issues that kind of come about and are, are manageable. And others need treatment and therapy and everything else. And others may well, may live in silence and never tell anybody and be fine. <laughs> so, so this is the issue, right? It, but it, it does affect people, and they know just by the studies that they've done, you know, of of some of the things that do happen to some survivors, not all survivors, right? So this material is not really made meant to be saying that every single person who has survived child sexual abuse or incest or anything like that would would have these symptoms, would have these problems. That's not the case. But it's just that a large portion do, and so that's why they've documented it, and it's really. It's well documented now. But the thing is, is, I wanted to kind of just finish this article up. But what they were saying was, and I'll give you the link. This is from www.psychotherapist.net forward slash adult survivors.html. And it's from Carol Bulwer, MFT, PhD, out of Los Angeles, Santa Monica, Santa Monica Redondo Beach, um, California. Adult Survivors of Childhood Sexual Abuse. That's the name of the article. And it's, it's adult survivors of childhood sexual abuse. What is sexual abuse? And they, you know, they go on to talk about that. We we looked at that on Friday, and um, what kind of a person would victimize a child? You know, what is sexual abuse of a child? You know, sexual abuse represents any kind of sexual contact between an adult or an older teen and a child, and 
They said this behavior is used to gain power over the child and often involves the betrayal of the child's trust. And, I mean, it's not always a betrayal of power. It's not always a, a, an issue of power and control. I mean, I was talking about that on Friday. Sometimes it's a perversion. You know, there's lots of people out there, pedophiles and, and child sexual predators, who really are, you know, have these perversions going on where they are, are sexually attracted to a certain age child, whether it be an 8-year-old, 7-year-old, 3-month-old. I mean, honestly, this is the issue. And a lot of it's not just about power and, and control. A, a lot of it is about sexual perversion. And so it, it's just very sad, and no child should ever have to go through this. Children should be allowed to be children. And this is why I'm, I'm talking about this. This is why I, I, I do a whole lot of public speaking about these issues, because children should be allowed to be children. They shouldn't have an adult forcing themselves on them sexually. And they shouldn't have an adult even trying to coerce them or manipulate them sexually. They shouldn't be doing anything sexually to a child because children should be allowed to explore their own sexuality on their own good time, you know, with their own peers, right? This is the normal way of, of, of life, and this is really the way it should be. And, like, too many people, too many, sci- you know, uh, scientists and, and, and medical doctors have taken a look at the situation. Children's bodies are not meant to be used sexually, and so the issue is, is an adult who says, oh, but the child does, it doesn't hurt the child. There's a whole lot of people out there backing child sexual abuse up, saying, oh, it doesn't hurt a child. I'll tell you a whole lot different. You know what I mean? I'll tell you that it does hurt a child. And, you know, like, there's so many of us out here who, who, who would tell you the same thing. You know, th- this is the issue. There's a whole lot of people that want to legalize adult-child sexual relationships, and they want to get the government to back it up. There's people out there lobbying the government right now for it. And the issue is, is like, you know, the rest of society is just sitting back saying, well, whatever. But no, it's not whatever. It's completely wrong. And it'll never be right. Now, I don't mind speaking out against it. So, there you go. But they said, what kind of person would victimize a child? Like, anybody could be a sexual abuser. Anybody, even children themselves, right? So, it's not just some person, you know, lurking lurking around in a dark trench coat, you know, wearing a mask over their face. Like, we're talking people who live next door. We're talking family members, you know. Moms and dads, grandmas and grandpas, aunts and uncles, you know, cousins and uh, siblings many times, um, you know, uh, could be a distant relative, could be uh, a family friend who just comes by the house all the time and has access to the children, could be a, another child. Children do sexually use other children and sexually abuse them. And and it could be, uh, a, you know, someone out in the community, teacher, coach, you know, uh, anybody who has access to your child, right? Not good at all. And, I mean, doctors, lawyers, I mean, you name it. Everybody's involved. And it's really sad because nobody should be doing this. Why don't adults just go and have sexual relationships and sexual uh, issues going on with other adults? Like, why do people think that they have to... I'll never understand this. I was sexually abused as a child. I was, I was molested as well as raped and sodomized by my brother's incest, right? And so, and then later on after that, there was two of his friends that used to hang around... Yeah, well, they were both my brother's friends, really, and they used to hang around the house. They had access to me, and they, they were there was some sec- unwanted sexual touching there. And then, you know, throughout my life, I've kind of had that going on. And it, the issue is, is that why? You know, it, it's just it's just not right, and it, it's just not it never will be right, and I'll never ever understand it myself. Um, adults should be having sexual relations with adults, and leave the kids out of it. And, and children should be allowed to grow up and explore their own sexuality in their own good time, right? So what kind of a person would victimize? Anybody. Anybody can be a child sexual abuser. And how common is child sexual abuse? It's very common. But they, 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 the stats are, are what they are, and they, they're everywhere. So it's about one to three to one, one in three to four girls and one to six to seven, one in six to seven boys will experience some type of sexual abuse in their, before, before they hit 18, whether that's unwanted sexual touching, molestation, exploitation, rape, you name it. Um, but that's the, that's the stats, and that's what they are. And then they said... What are the effects of sexual abuse? We were talking about that, like in your body, emotions, relationships, you know, self-confidence, sexuality, right? What problems are caused by sexual abuse? And this is where we left off on Friday. So I sort of wanted to just take a look at this. And, you know, so many people, not not everybody would experience these things. Like I was saying, not all survivors would experience the same things. And, you know, it depends on, on the person and, and how, you know, how much help they might have received as a child. Um, you know, whether or not there was any support or whether or not... They, um, how bad the abuse was, how severe it was, how how frequent, you know, I mean, any number of things can can change the situation. Like nobody's case is going to be exactly the same as another's, and because everybody's different and everybody handles things differently, and children will always handle things, you know, differently because we're all unique, right? And so, 
you know, it's not everybody would have these issues, but there there are some huge ones. That's major major sexual symptoms of child sexual of, of sexual abuse, and also major long term medical symptoms of sexual abuse. They talk about as well as major long term psychological symptoms of sexual abuse. So it's the psychological stuff, the, the medical stuff, the you know the physical stuff as well as the symptoms. And they say that they list off quite a few things. They said that a person might experience difficulty with becoming aroused and feeling sensations. Um, sex might feel like an obligation. Right? Sex feels like an obligation. Number three, sexual thoughts and images that are disturbing. Number four, inappropriate sexual behaviors or sexual compulsivity. Uh, number five, vaginal pain. Number six, inability to achieve orgasm or other orgasmic or difficulties. Number seven, erections, problems with, or ejaculatory difficulty. Number eight, feeling disassociated while having sex. Right. Number nine, detachment or emotional distance while having sex. And number ten, being afraid of sex or avoiding sex. Number eleven, guilt, fear, anger, disgust, or other negative feelings when being to- touched. Right. These are major sexual symptoms of, child, of, of sexual abuse. Right. And the issue is, is like, I mean, not everybody would feel all of those or, or have all of those symptoms or those problems, but some people might, and some people might have some, and and not the others, you know. And it's just the issue that this this is really culmination of what can happen to people who have been sexually abused, and whether they were children, sexually abused as children, or or just suffered from a sexual assault as an adult, right? Um, you know, it's horrific, right? What this stuff does to people, and it's not something to overlook and take lightly. The reason I'm talking about child sexual abuse really is because I'm dealing with this stuff right now in, in my own healing journey with the CSA incest. But the And also, because somebody tell me, what's the big deal about CSA? <laughs> I'm like, okay, have you ever been raped as a child? Were you raped? Were you sodomized? Were you, you know, like, cause I always talk, like, I, I, the issue is, is that in that article that I wrote, I wrote about child physical, verbal, emotional, psychological abuse, right? The whole thing, physical, verbal, emotional, psychological abuse, neglect. I also mentioned child sexual abuse, right? And then this person has the nerve to tell me, what's the big deal about CSA, child sexual abuse? I'm like, okay, you just pushed me now to go ahead and just talk about this and talk about this and talk about this. And now this is really all I'm going to talk about for a long time. Because that made me really angry because I was raped as a child. You know, we're talking, I mean, this is incredibly wrong. And anybody who thinks this is okay needs to get their heads checked, you know. Um, there's something so so horrid and so wrong about that. People say, well, what is it? Well, come live in my nightmare for a few days or even a few hours. I dare anybody to take on my, my past. I really do. Um, it's not easy. And, you know, it, it, it hasn't been an easy road for me at all. I wanted to kill myself until four years ago. My my abuser killed himself. There you go. And so, you know, it, it's horrific, you know, what this stuff does to children and never, ever should have happened. And for somebody to come, you know, who knows I'm a child abuse advocate, I'm a prevention advocate, I'm out here really trying to tell people, look, this is the reality of child abuse. You know, for somebody to come along and say that to me, I was just like, what? You know? Okay, well, now you've done it. Because now that's what I'm going to talk about. Because this, this person showed me which I will not name names, just showed me, you know, um, the society really doesn't want to hear about child sexual abuse. They really don't. It's uncomfortable. Nobody wants to think of somebody raping a child. Nobody wants to think of somebody molesting a child, you know, sexually using a child in whatever way. They just don't want to think about it. So too bad I'm talking about it, you know, because this is the issue. This is happening, people, whether we want to to believe it or not. I'm not going to name names, but I know so many people who are survivors of child sexual abuse and incest. You know, child sexual abuse, incorporating any say, any number of, of these issues, whether it's molestation, you know, sexual exploitation, right, unwanted sexual touching, rape, you name it. So I know all kinds of survivors, you know, and we've all been affected by it. So, I, I you know, this just really bothered me that this person would say this to me because I'm like, well, okay, you know, maybe you, maybe you were, maybe you were raped as a child and you didn't seem to mind it or something. I don't know. It really horrified me. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, that is really something when somebody comes and says, what's the big deal about CSA? It's like, okay, well, what's the matter with you that you would think there's not a big deal about child sexual abuse? This is an incredibly horrible situation. No child should ever have to be abused, and yet one in three to four girls and one in six to seven boys will be abused sexually in some way under the age of 18. What does this tell you? 
this is really bad, you know. And so I thought, hey, I don't mind talking about it. So there we go. But these issues, you know, I mean, yeah. I mean, I've had issues with myself and my body my whole life. But I was abused as well, physically, emotionally, verbally, psychologically, right? My mother was my main abuser as far as the physical abuse went, but as, as well as the other stuff, you know. And and my dad did throw in some of his physical abuse too, but mainly it was my mother. And, you know, and she went ahead and let this, this abuse happen between me and my brother, you know, raping me and, and sodomizing me because I actually told her. And what was going on? And she said, "Well, just wrap yourself up uh, like a mummy. It's not my problem. You deal with it." That was her answer. So you know, like she she knew her 21 year old son was raping me, and you know, like that's horrible. Like you don't let your 21 year old son rape your 8 year old daughter. You just don't, you know. And and like there was no help for me, you know. I mean, I was being beaten on and pummeled by her anyway, and and, and burned and everything else, you know. And people, you know, people have the nerve to sit there and say, "What's the big deal?" You know, I'm lucky I made it out of there with, sane, with any kind of sanity whatsoever, you know. And and the sad thing is, is I actually stayed by my mother's side the whole time and actually tried to protect her until I was about 30 years old from my dad, you know, Mr. Abuser Dad, who everybody thought was a saint and Mr. Lovely Christian Man, you know. So, I mean, you know, no, you know, I'm, I got issues with people that sit by and say, what's the big deal about, about abuse or what's the big deal about child sexual abuse? You know, I got something to tell you. That's why I'm talking on these shows. That's why I'm doing this, right? This is absolutely horrific, and no, nobody should ever have to go through this, no child or adult, right? And so you can have any number of issues, any number of things. Any major long-term medical symptoms of sexual abuse, right? It could be anything like insomnia. They talk about vaginal or pelvic pain, eating disorders, headaches, TMJ syndrome, um, you know, that the jaw, probably that issue with the jaw, low back pain, chest pressure, uh, erection problems or ejaculatory difficulty, asthma. Dizziness, fainting, self-harming, self-mutilation, chronic physical complaints, right? I mean, I've had any number of these things. I know when I was growing up as a child, my mother, my dad raped my mother in front of me when I was about, just right, about five and a half years old. And the reason I know this is because I know the timing of when we lived in this house. I know when we moved. Like, there's all these little markers for me for timing, so I, I know when it was. And, um... You know, that always bothered me, the, the sexual dysfunction between my parents, because they made it very public. Like, it was, you know, it was very well known in my home that my mother was, my dad was raping my mother, and that she, she was fighting him off all the time. And my mother would get my older brothers to try to protect her, right? And my older brothers would have to stand by and try to protect my mother, then they'd get beat up by my dad, right? So this is the issue. And so, <laughs> absolutely sick and twisted. But the thing is, is I, I grew up listening to their vulgar fights and what you know watching my mother be raped like that caused me a lot of problems with my own um you know with my own identity as far as as i knew that i was a girl you know what i mean and like i, I growing up the whole time had a lot of problems with my own body and i was being abused as well by my mother mainly physically abused abused and, vis- and verbally abused and of course the whole thing was very psychologically damaging and so you know just witnessing all this stuff and and you know and then to be raped and sodomized by my brother you know I mean, it's just like, it, you want to talk about some serious problems. Um, that wasn't good at all. And the, and the issue is, is it was some first, you know, some molestation first, and then it, and then it escalated to rape and, and sodomy. And then it escalated just, uh, you know, to rape. Right? And so, you know, this is really, really bad. It never, ever should have happened. And the, and the issues are, like, I hated my body. I hated my skin. And then after I told my mother that this was happening between my brother and I, my mother would call me a whore and a slut and a tramp and slap me around and, and beat me bloody. You know, I'm talking, like, blood on the walls and the carpet. and Absolutely horrific. And my sister actually sat there and watched it and didn't even try to protect me, you know, and like I was just this rotten little kid that just should have been dead according to my mother and you know I was this evil little, little whore a little harlot right that seduced her 21 year old son or something I, I, I don't really understand that whole concept of what was going on in my mom's mind but she was mentally ill so there you go and so you know like the issues are what they are and, and I, I've had so many problems with my body I by the time I was like 12, 13 years old I hated my body and I wanted out of my skin and I didn't want anybody touching me and I had this guy touch me in junior high that um, I was I was right around 12 years old, 11, 12 years old. This guy touched me and, and, and grabbed my crotch, and I, I beat the crap out of him, literally kicked the crap out of him. I mean, I hurt this dude. And the teacher had to come and get me off of him because I was going to kill him. And, you know, he was like, oh, I'm so sorry. You know, he was apologizing and stuff because he thought it was just funny. And I was like, you son of a bitch. You know, I, Excuse my language, but that's, that's the issue. Like, I was raped and molested at the age of eight. And then I got some guy grabbing my crotch. I'm like, you stay the hell. So I do, I could not have anybody touch me. 
You know what I mean? Like, my mother was abusing me. My brother used me sexually. I was like, nobody touches me. You know what I mean? I had huge problems with my body. So, therefore, I could not date in high school. I could not date. I could not allow myself to get close to anybody. I didn't want anybody touching me, period. And, you know, it did set me back. You know what I mean? Um, And then I go to see, uh, you know, then my brother, when I was 13, tells me, oh, he calls me on the phone. He's going to kill himself. And he he was actually committing suicide at the time. And he had slit his wrists and everything, and he was killing himself. And he says, he says, oh, well, you know, I used to love to touch you when you were young, and it, you, you, your skin was, like, baby soft, but it, was, but it wasn't baby soft. It was sexual, like, like, he says, you know, he was telling me all this. Stuff. I'm like, oh, my God, like, here's my brother killing himself, and now he's trying to, and now he's actually getting off about thinking about raping me. I mean, my God. Like, I was just like, oh, good Lord, you know. So then I had to deal with that. You know, then I went when I was twenty, twenty-one years old. I went to the the a gynecologist to get on the pill right first time, first checkup, and you know I told him I was a virgin, <laughs> right? Because <laughs> I didn't really think, I didn't think they would really be able to tell. I didn't think that there'd be any way they would know. And so the lady's like, "You're not a virgin, honey." You know, are you sure? And I'm like, oh, "I'm absolutely positive I'm a vir- I'm a virgin, man." And <laughs> this this gynecologist was like, "I'm sorry, but you're not a virgin." <laughs> you know, we see some scar tissue in there, so we know that you've been. You, you were sexually abused. And I was like, no, I, I'm a virgin. <laughs> right? That's, and that, you know, I mean, this is incre- so incredibly hard on people. Nobody should have to go through that. Of course, I just met this guy that I love dearly. I wanted to marry this man. And, you know, he was going to marry me and everything. And, you know, we were both abused as children, so it didn't work out. But the thing is, uh, it's a good thing. We would have killed each other. So um, neither one of us had worked through our issues, and we were both seriously messed up. He was raped as a child, too, by by his dad, right? And so it was a huge issue. But the thing is, is like, I mean, I, I love this man and I, you know, I, I I was so petrified of being in any kind of intimate relationship, you know, even with this guy that I told him, I was like, don't hurt me, you know, like, like, you know, sex for me was an issue, you know what I mean? And it always has been. So for so many survivors of child sexual abuse, you know, there's lots of things that, you know, like, there's lot, I think that there's lots of people out there, who, treatments and different things that can help. You know, for me, I've been able to work through it with the help of, of a really good man who came into my life 16 years ago. And, you know, he really changed things for me because I, he, he showed me I, that I, I could trust him. You know, and he's a good man, and and he loves me. We we do have our spats, and we do have our down times, but you know, he's a good man, and like he would never hurt me. You know, and I like I know that, and you know, we have our issues just like everybody else. But he's he's a good person. He respects me. He just you know he just not always the most supportive person. But the thing is, is he 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 wouldn't hurt me. You know, and and so this is a real relief for me. It really was because I, I I wanted to be a woman. I wanted to be able to experience these things. But in the meantime, I hated my body because what had been done to it. I hated the fact that I had been used sexually as a child, and I hated the fact that I had been made to feel like a woman at the age of eight years old. You know, I, I hated that whole issue, you know what I mean, of these, of knowing, you know what I mean, of what happened to me as a child, and and then, you know, really wanting that adult, you know, relationship with somebody, that intimacy, but yet, you know, so afraid to let myself experience it, because to me it was so horrific and so tragic what happened to me when I was eight years old, and I was... I was raped and sodomized. I mean, you know, and then the sexual abuse just continued on until my brother left the country, right? So I had huge problems with my body and huge problems with my mind as far as my own sexuality went. And um, it was hard, and it still is today. You know, I mean, I I, I don't know if I'll I'll completely ever get over it, but I I think, you know, I've come a long way, and that's good. And, um, you know, but I'm just starting to actually work on my CSA incest stuff. And it's, it's hard. It's a hard situation for all of us. And, you know, so if you're a survivor out here and you're listening, you know, make sure that you do reach out and get some help. And, you know, don't allow yourself to just spiral down where there are people, there are good people out there. So that's what uh, the next portion of this little article here talks about, um, how, like, why, why do I have to deal with it now if it happened back then? This is something survivors might ask themselves. They might say, well, you know, if this happened so long ago, why do I have to deal with it now? They said, there are many reasons why children do not deal with the abuse at the time of the incident. Unconscious feelings of shame, disbelief, self-blame. Abusers may also threaten or bribe children into not speaking up or convincing the child that, that it's indeed their fault and that they will never be believed otherwise. And these tactics are used to silence the child under no circumstances to the child to blame for the abuse. And although if the abuse is not dealt with in a therapeutic and healing setting, the effects of past abuse will remain and undermine the victim for years to come. Well, that's what happened to me until four years ago when I started my healing journey. You know, all this stuff was just undermining me and it was just there and it was always, 
just just below the surface, you know. Some of it was pushed way down. Some of it was just below the surface, and some of it was, like I said, you know, really far down there. And I, you know, I mean, I've had a real like it's been a four years of a major healing journey here for me, but it's been great. And they said, does it get any better? Like the worst part, they said the abuse is over now. So next, now your next step is to surround yourself with supportive, supportive, loving people, and focus on the desire you have to heal yourself. So this is your process. You must be gentle and patient with yourself as your healing process gently unfolds. And you are giving yourself the gift of coming to life again. And that's exactly where I'm at. You know what I mean? Like like I have a lot of supportive people in my life. My family, my immediate family is not here for me. And they, well, I couldn't expect them to. I mean, my God, they they were my abusers. You know what I mean? Um, the issue is, is like my sister who should be here for me was abused too. So I, I don't even really hold it. The only thing I did was cut them off because they're too toxic and they're too uh, codependent. But, um, you know, like, I mean, I, I love my sister very much. And, and, you know, it's a shame because she was abused too. And, like, you know, she I don't hold that stuff against her, right? I mean, I know she was just fighting to save her own life. And, you know, she was just fighting to stay sane in that in that mess, right? And we talk about it. We used to talk about it back when we were talking. And, you know, there's nothing she can really do for me because she's still hurting so badly herself. You know, she takes long drives and, you know, cries and cries. And I mean, my whole family's suicidal, right? So, I mean, I, you know, it's it's so sad to see that a uh, family destroyed by this stuff. And, you know, I know what it's like to be out there with nobody, you know what I mean, like to, with no support. Like right now I've got a lot of support, which is great. But that's because I started to reach out, <clears throat> you know. So four years ago I started to reach out, and that's really what made all the difference. Because before that it was just keeping it all inside and not that many people knew. Only a few people that I just decided to tell, you know what I mean, um, as an adult, right? And so, you know, there are only a few people that really knew, and I didn't have really anybody really to talk to, and so I started to reach out and, and join to some sur- adult survivor groups, um, uh, which was really cool, online groups. Um, what's cool about that is you can remain anonymous. You don't have to give your name, and you can just, you know, you can get support and you can get help and at least talk to people who understand where you've been and, and offer some support and, you know, offer some helpful, you know, stuff that worked for them, books that they may have read, or just to be a sense of support, you know, because we... Abused children quite often don't have any support. <laughs> That's the issue. You know what I mean? Like most abused children just aren't going to have a lot of support naturally. You know, and they're, they they quite often won't ask for help because they're not used to it. They're used to just suffering along in their abuse. You know, and so it's like, oh well, no, I can take it. I can do it. You know, and then really know knowing that you can't, and knowing that you know you do need help. You know, and I mean, I spent night after night after night my whole entire life just crying and crying and crying and. And crying, crying. And when I was a teenager, I'd spend night after night after night just so high. And so, so high, you know. And I would just be so... Because if I wasn't high, I would have killed somebody or I would have killed myself. You know what I mean? Like, I had to be high because my emotions were running so high at that point. Because when I was a teenager, I was still being abused. And, um, you know, like, my, my emotions were so, so, so strong that, like, I would have either killed myself or I'd have killed somebody. I was just so angry and so, so completely annihilated by my, what my parents were doing. And in the meantime, you know, trying to toe the line, but still doing drugs, you know. So, I mean, I would hold jobs down and stuff. And the, the issue is I was just really suffering my whole life, you know, and never reaching out to get any help until four years ago when I made a decision to do that. So make sure you do, you know, you're not alone. And that's what they say here now, what? They said you're not alone. And, in fact, in recognizing what has happened to you and speaking about your experience is one of the most vital components in the healing process. Since you have already taken a good step, if you think that you have been a victim of sexual abuse, you need to take action immediately um, so your life will not under, be undermined by the past one more day, right? One day more, get help, they said. And there is lots of help out there, right? And this website, this is www.psychotherapist.net um, forward slash adult survivors.html. It's a great bit of information there, and I hope people will check it out. So thanks for being here, everybody. I appreciate it. I'll be back on tomorrow morning, one child abuse survivor to another, and then I'll be back on... Uh, um, tomorrow tomorrow night, Dreamcatchers Talk Radio here on Blog Talk Radio. And tomorrow night is Adult Survivor Night, so peer-to-peer night um, tomorrow night on adults, on uh, Dreamcatchers for Abuse Children's uh, Dreamcatcher Talk Radio. So if you type into the into the Blog Talk browser, little search button thingy, you can just type in Dreamcatchers, and that's where we are. But otherwise, it's www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash Dreamcatchers, right? And so it's all one word, Dreamcatchers. So be sure and tune into our shows. We have some great hosts. We have some great guests coming on. We have Carol D. Levine coming on the show August the second. We have Jim Richardson Jr. coming on August fifteenth on that show. Uh, we have uh, um, Vivian 
Farmery, Lisa A. Freeman, Ben for Stanley. We've got a bunch of people coming up here for Dreamcatchers Talk Radio. Be sure and, and check those shows out. Elizabeth Brawley and Star um, Myers will be talking. They, they have a show Thursday nights over there. And Donna Shearer and myself do Friday nights at Dreamcatchers Talk Radio. Please tune in to that, right? We do we put in a lot of work and a lot of effort for that. We're all volunteers, right? So thanks for being here. I appreciate everybody tuning into my shows. You know, like I, I really appreciate it. I know a lot of people have listened to my shows and they'll go back and listen to the archives. And I don't know who you all are, but I really appreciate it. And, you know, I hope that uh, it helps one person. If it helps one person, it makes it worthwhile to me. Um, I know it helps me to do these shows, so I'm hoping that it will help one person and that makes it all worthwhile, right? Have a great night and take good care of yourselves. Bye-bye.